Suppose you have only two takeoffs and landings logged within the preceding 90 days. You aren't current to carry passengers until you log one more takeoff and landing. Simply go out, do one more takeoff and landing, log it, then invite your passengers into the airplane. This is where tact becomes an asset. I do not recommend saying, hey, you guys wait here, I'm going to go out and get current, and then I'll come back and pick you up. That's one of those declarations that makes people suddenly remember they left the water running at their summer home 150 miles away, and they need to go and deal with it immediately. Either get current before having friends join you at the airport, or be creative. A bestseller is, let me go burn off some fuel so there will be more room for your luggage. They don't know that the luggage doesn't go in the fuel tank. FAR 91.3 Responsibility and Authority of the Pilot in Command Greetings, Captain, and welcome to FAR 91.3, one of the most powerful regulations in the book. Essentially, it gives you, the pilot of a small airplane, the same authority as the captain of a Boeing 747. The regulation states that you, the pilot in command, are directly responsible for and are the final authority as to the operation of the aircraft. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Declaring an emergency is one of the most important options of this rule. For instance, you might be experiencing engine problems and need tower assistance to clear the runway for landing. Stating, and I quote, I'm declaring an emergency, end quote, puts all available resources at your beck and call. While experiencing an emergency requiring immediate action, this regulation allows you to deviate from any rule to the extent required to meet that emergency. FAR 91.403 Aircraft Maintenance General Flying an airplane is a safe activity because of the FAA's strict maintenance policy. That's why it's extremely rare for modern aircraft to suffer mechanical difficulty. Regulations place primary responsibility for maintaining an aircraft in an airworthy condition on the owner or operator. The owner is the person who has legal title to the aircraft, but this isn't always the person in charge of its maintenance. When an airplane is leased back to a flight school, the fixed base operator is now the person legally responsible for maintaining that aircraft. FAR 6151 deals with pilot log books and how pilots log their flight time. Of course, flight time is important because regulations require a minimum amount of it along with certain types of it for you to meet the qualifications necessary to become a rated pilot. The prized flight time of which I'm speaking here is, of course, pilot in command flight time or PIC time. Now, before I tell you the several different ways in which you can log PIC time, let me tell you the main reason that you are allowed to log pilot in command time. Now, before I do this, I want you to put your finger in your ear. That's right, do it. Why? Because what I'm about to say is so important, I don't want it to go in one ear and out the other. Pilot in command time is essentially one thing and only one thing. It's credit the FAA allows you to claim for a certain type of experience you acquire in an airplane. This is an essential point to understand since experience is coin, it's commodity, and it has value for pilots. The FAA says that there are three ways to acquire pilot in command experience in an airplane and all three provide you with the quality of experience that the FAA says will help you become a more capable and wise pilot. Okay, take your finger out of your ear now. Obtain flight time doing any one of the following three things and you can log the time as pilot in command time in your logbook. Number one, the first way to log pilot in command time is if you are the sole manipulator of the controls on an aircraft for which you are rated. For instance, suppose you have a private pilot certificate with a single engine land rating. That means you are rated to fly a Cessna 172 because it's a single engine land airplane. If you are manipulating the controls of a Cessna 172 in flight, 
it's pretty clear that you are the one that is flying the airplane. Therefore, the FA says you may log all the time you manipulate the controls as PIC time. Yes, the FAA also considers all the time you are using the autopilot as loggable pilot in command time too. The FAA considers manipulating the autopilot as manipulating the controls even if there is no physical contact with the controls on your part. Number two, the second way to log pilot in command time is if you are the sole occupant of the aircraft. And it should also be pretty clear that if you are the only person in an airplane and that airplane is flying, then there's a good chance you are the one flying it. 